Hi, and thank you for downloading our plugin. Um, this video will just cover your uh, basic configuration in order for you to start using it immediately. So let's get started. Simply log into your WordPress admin er area, which you were at the dashboard. So we're going to choose plugins, add new. Then we're going to choose upload. You'll choose browse. And then we'll uh, change to the location of wherever you save the file to on your computer. And we're install now. Most of you will never see this screen here. Only certain WordPress installations has it and it's all dependent upon the server config configuration. Okay, now we choose Activate Plugin, and it's now activated. To configure it, we simply go to Settings, we choose the Social Feed Slider. Now, you'll see uh, uh, many options on here. I'm going to cover the ones that you need to set. The other are is really for advanced users, and I don't recommend making any changes to it. Okay, the first one we're going to do, we're going to choose Enable and then we're going to set the Facebook page URL. Now this is the URL to a Facebook page, not to your personal Facebook account. Okay, so once you get your Facebook page URL, it'll look something like what you see here. You just enter it. You want to show faces, show stream and force the wall. I like to uh, show the header, which is find us on Facebook. You'll see all of this when we uh, go to the site. And the position, you can choose the left or the right of the screen to show. I always prefer the left. Uh, the, the widget vertical position, I would just leave it checked at middle because what happens is we dynamically change the, the width of the display of all of them based on how many you do have activated. Uh, again, you'll see uh, some advanced settings such as depending upon the color of your theme, etc. Uh, you can experiment with these uh, if you choose to or just leave them set for the default. This is the actual icon that's going to show on the screen. Okay, we'll go to the Twitter feed. Um, enable it. I always use the profile instead of search. So you, I check off the profile and then you use you put in your username. Okay, in this case, uh, my username I use for Twitter is Dolls. Um, again, I leave these set the same. Um, the number of tweets, four is a good number, um, simply because it retrieves it dynamically, and, and you can put 100 if you wanted to. However, it will slow down the load of this widget. Uh, again, the position and the button to show. Um, we go down again, and here's the theme and all that. I always leave this default. I do check off the scroll bar because this will enable a scroll bar within the widget so it doesn't uh, take over the whole page. It will allow users to scroll if you, if you do choose, you know, show 10 tweets. Um, I use... Show avatars, I always check that off. Hashtags, I choose personally not to display it. Again, it's up to you. Same as with the timestamp. Okay, with Google Plus, it will you enable it? And this will be your Google Plus page ID and only the ID. Um, we've included an example for you here. As you can see, the in bold is an example number. You can choose show badge, show the feed, the uh, number of posts, uh, the position again, left or right. Now you can mix these up and have a couple on the left and a couple on the right. Um, again, I, I leave it all on one because I prefer the uncluttered look. Uh, the button that's, go that's going to be displayed. And again, a, a few theme colors, uh, colors that you can change with theming. And now I know you're going to see this run Chrome and how to set up a Chrome job. Do not worry about this. We'll cover this right at the end. It's really simple. Your LinkedIn feed. 
I show my public profile. You can also show your company profile. And here's what that will look like. Uh, essentially, you go to your uh, profile online, grab the URL, put it in. You can look up your company ID to find it and put in your company ID here. And you can choose to show it or not show it. Here you can show the order you want to show it in in the widget. Um, public, your, your profile, and then a company, or the company on top, and then yours. The same settings again. Again, I, I just leave them. Uh, and the image to show. It's like I said, it can be a lot of options, be very confusing, but if you just set the basics, it, this widget will work for you fine. Your YouTube feed and the channel. I use Liz Tomei's. Uh, show the badge, show the videos, number of videos to show, and here's, here's very important. The uploads, your favorites, or playlist, okay? Now, if you do not have any uploads, you obviously don't want to show uploads. You can show your favorites or playlist. As, as you can see, the playlist ID, you'll use that. And we also include an option to help you find that. Uh, again, we'll just go with the uploads here. Same basic configurations with your button. You can choose your button, um, the position, and left or right, along with some colors. Your Vimeo feed. You can enable it. Uh, all you need here is your user ID. And for the demo, I use my channels. And uh, you got the stream ID for the channel. To get this, you just go to your Vimeo account, uh, choose the stream you want from uh, your profile, the page will load, and you'll have your stream ID right there. Uh, how many videos to show from it, and to show the video titles. Thumbnail size, this is what's going to be the image of the that shows in the widget. I personally prefer the large. And we still, again, we have all the, the same recurring options here. Now your Pinterest feed, it's your username. That's all you have to put in there. And as again, we see here, we see the Chrome. Um, again, I'm going to cover this in just a moment. It is nothing that's really hard at all. So the first thing we want to do is we want to save the settings. This saves all the settings. And now we'll go back to Google Plus or to the Pinterest. You only have to do this for one of them the first time and choose Run Chrome. You'll get a message, either a success or an error. If you get an error, you, you'll need to contact our support and uh, we'll take care of that. And now we go to our page, refresh it, and here they are, each one of them in the order that we've set them. Our LinkedIn, our YouTube. And notice on the YouTube, they can subscribe right here from them. Vimeo and the Pinterest and uh, with the follow me. And uh, that's the basic configuration. Uh, you're up and running. Now, the only thing left to do is to set a Chrome job. And again, as I said, it's not hard at all. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it with cPanel. If you have a different web hosting control panel, just open a support ticket with your web hosting company. I'm sure they'll be glad to help you. So what we do here is we give you the actual URL to the Chrome job file. For cPanel, you'll need this URL. So we'll just uh, copy. We've logged into our cPanel and we've chosen Chrome jobs. Um, to find that, cPanel makes it simple again. Yeah, here in Find, you start typing Chrome, and it comes up. So we choose Chrome Jobs. Now, how often you want to run this is up to you, and that really depend upon how often do you post to Pinterest and Google Plus. Um, myself, very rarely, once a day, that's it. Um, 
I know some users are very avid users and they post several times a day. So what I would choose is twice an hour at the most. If you do it every five minutes, some hosts will, uh, they have policies against that. So twice an hour or once an hour is a good one to use. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're just going to use the git command to grab this uh, and activate the cron job. Now, I'm going to go ahead and paste the URL in here simply because I have the git command copied here. Here it is. This is what you will want to use on all current cPanel hostings. And we'll go back to the front and we'll paste that in, make sure there's one space in between it. And now we're good. We're going to add the Chrome job. Okay, so what this is, once an hour, this is going to run every hour. Here, now for the first one you, or the first day, you probably want to put an email in here that you get that you'll receive email at. Because what will happen here, if there's an error or any issues, you'll get an email that it'll either say success or it'll give an error. And if there's an error, again, your hosting company can help you with this fully. And once you're certain that it's working, the one thing I always do is, is come back, make sure there's nothing in the email spot, and I update the email spot. And this will make sure that you don't get 100 emails a day saying, hey, your Chrome job worked. Now that's all there is to this. You're up and running with it. Again, any issues with the widget itself, uh, we do provide support. We have an excellent support team that actually enjoys their job and enjoys helping people. Um, so good luck. Um, wish you all the best, and I hope you never have to use our support, but if you do, we'll be there waiting for you.